Well hello, exciting times from HQ today as I've received what I can only describe as a premium ready to fly quad. This is a 2017 Diatone GT200 Stretch X made up of really good looking pieces and it's a great looking quad. So let's dive in and see what's in the box. And it's full to bursting point. Warnings, instructions, stickers, the OSD setup for the camera, a skew planer, Oh, we finally get to the quad itself, which is in this nice protective bag. Look at this. It looks completely blinged up. The sort of the, the chrome effect on the windings and the motors is just amazing. It is a thing of beauty. It's really been put together nicely, I have to say. Some real care there. These motors look huge. These motors are, are made by Sunny Sky for Diatone and they are 2306, 2450 kV. And they're great looking, just they feel really good. Nice magnets on those. Also Sunny Sky 30 amp ESCs, which support D-Shot 600, of course, brilliant. Under here is a Fury F3 flight controller, which supports 8K, 8K settings. HS1177 camera with a 2.3mm lens. And a very interesting um, anti-vibration system. So it's got soft mounted motors, but it's a compression system on the outside. There's these silicon pads which compress rather than something you, you go into sort of directly. It goes underneath the motor. These look like they don't distort, which is much nicer. So I think we can say it's, <laughs> it's fairly well specced. It looks really nice. Loads of spares in the bag. Well, I mean, look at the amount of cables you get there. Battery straps, bits and bobs. This is the plug and fly version, so there's no receiver in this. Are we going to be putting in a FreeSky XM Plus? Just looks like they've left some cabling out for me, and there's plenty of room for it to go in there. And it looks like there's room on the back here for a GoPro session as well. There was a recent uh, change in the props they were supplying. They were supplying some uh, 5152s. Now they're giving away these Gemfan 5045. Just a one pack, so try not to kill it. Oh my god, that's so... <laughs> it, it really does feel solid. It's like a something... You could use it as a weapon to kill people with if you wanted to. That's how solid it feels. Really, I'm very impressed by the way it's put together. Slightly bizarre though, it doesn't have a, a lens cap. I mean, a lot of people do complain that the lens seems exposed. It kind of depends how you crash. If you crash into the ground, you're kind of doing this, it's not a problem. If you're going into a tree, more of a problem. So we'll try not to hit a tree. Well, just doing um, the build here, although there's not much of it, uh, just a few things to mention. So I've taken off this cover here, which is not normally something you need to do. Uh, the reason is I wanted to plug the OSD control in the camera and check it had WDR set, which it actually didn't, so worth doing that, but very hard to get to um, if you don't take that out. The other thing I noticed was I had this little lead floating about, and I was like, well, what's that for? This, this was the bit that was plugged in the camera. This bit was flapping around here. Um, and I, I couldn't really tell because the camera covered up these two ports as the, the VTX below and where the ESCs go and this is on the flight controller. Fortunately, as far as the instructions go, uh, pretty good stuff. We had a good layout here of, uh, of the board and we can see over here, oops, it's actually for the buzzer. There's a buzzer minus buzzer plus. So I had a look in one of the many bags of things and we do actually have a buzzer here. There's not one on board. But this is a bit confusing, because here's the buzzer, here's the end for it. Which is exactly the same end as here. Which is a bit of an oversight, I thought. Maybe there should be a male and female, but I mean, I can solder that on. I think it's always worth having a buzzer. The um, only other thing we need to do here is get the receiver plugged in. There's um, S bus connection here, and here's another handy lead in in the bag that's going to plug in. I'll just cut the end off there and solder to my XM Plus. Okay, a quick few notes about Betaflight then. And it came with Betaflight 320 on it and it's using the FY 
QWERTY board. Ports wise, to set up my receiver, the UART number 3 to use. Configuration, and I've left this most of the same um, D Shot 600 with an 8K 4K. Um, and the main bit down here is the bit that really caught me out. I'd actually installed the beeper that I mentioned, and it didn't seem to be working. And it got to the point where I actually changed the beeper out only to come down here and find there's a whole beeper configuration. So it was beeping when I was arming, but not when I was having the beeper. And I didn't know this. This is my uh, lack of knowledge on 3.2. I needed to actually put this one to on, this RX set. So when you actually set to beep, unless this is set on, it doesn't work. I was going to look to change the PIDs, and I saw that some work's been done here. They've got different rates in. That's interesting. And I thought, oh, well, I'll just change it to normal on profile too. Only to find they've got slightly different values, which is interesting. They've put three different profiles in, all with slightly different PIDs. So I thought, OK, I won't mess with that. I'll just uh, let it go and see how that flies. I can always change it on the OSD, of course. Receiver-wise, didn't do anything there except for the fact that I flashed my XM Plus with the RSSI version. So I've got that set there as AUX12. It was much easier when I thought about what channel to use. You have to sort of subtract four now to get your... <laughs> Ox number. Modes wise, um, that had some stuff set up here as well, and I'll, I'll show you the picture of what it was. So obviously I've got arm up angling, uh, my beeper, which I found out eventually works, and air mode. The big thing I did put in, which is something I haven't really used before, was anti gravity because they actually had this set by default. Uh, it's not something I've messed with. Obviously, it's something that um, boosts your eye part of the PID when you sort of move the throttle up rapidly. I've never really noticed me losing attitude in, in big throttle movements, but I thought, well, I'll put this in here on a switch and I can tell the difference then. OSD was set up with its own thing, with its um, slightly bizarre italic font. I've, I've changed that back to my normal bold font. And again, we seem to have some current sensing stuff here. So I've, I've stuck uh, both an amp current draw there and an MAH drawn on my battery, see how that goes. And uh, oh yeah, and I set small angle to 180, and that was about it. And here it is, all built. Not too much to do. Um, obviously, installed the receiver, got the beeper in, got the um, these very high quality straps, strap for a GoPro there, battery strap. Still got a little bit of um, scratchy Velcro in there just to help me because there's nothing, there's no anti-slip mat or anything there. Free sky antenna wise, I took a little page out of the coppice and I bought them forwards like this on the frame. Yeah, it helps it maintain quite a low profile. There's only one thing. Now, this is like the minimum angle of the camera. It won't go any lower. But if you put a GoPro on, and I love these little silicon cases you get for it, like that, you'll see that the angle of the GoPro is way away from the camera. It needs to be like there. So, um, I don't know if the idea is to actually put a wedge on here anyway, but I'm going to need to do something. I might, I might try it. Well, I could try it without the GoPro first. And then I'll try one with just a straight angle because I want to see, I reckon it'll hit that lens and pick that up. And then I'll, I'll cut myself a little wedge and see how that goes. But yeah, excited to fly this. Uh, looks really good. These motors are immense. Let's find out. See you at the field. Okay, Dietone GT200S at the field. Let's test it for its maiden. Let's do a little line of sight just to hover. Uh, cause I haven't really spun this up and then we'll take it out, FPV. Well, that is super smooth and nice. Actually land it back on there now. I'll end it there, but where's the balance? <laughs> I'll just land it here. So here we are on the maiden flight and I just left that sound on once again to show that the VTX actually records a reasonable audio output. So you can check your motor sound okay but you do of course tend to pick up quite a lot of wind noise at the same time. 
So we're off and it's quite sort of overcast, so it's not the the best time to do this. Um, and that might be contributing a bit to the noise you've got where you, it's sort of struggling to get enough light it, that the noise sort of shows up more, but there certainly is some there. Now, my initial reaction to this was, where the hell is all my battery going? I'm just flying along, just cruising, and I'm putting 20-something amps, and the battery is struggling along here. Now, it could be the fact that, you know, these aren't the bestest ever batteries, but at the same time, I fly plenty of other quads, and they're fine. I was going here for the twin trees, and with the battery flashing along at 14.2, I was like, am I going to make that? <laughs> I'd better turn around and go back again. And landing's particularly tricky at that angle. So what I did next is stick a GoPro on, just straight on top of the mount, and you can see here that there's a particular problem with it, because as I suspected, it wasn't going to point up enough. I mean, I kind of find it interesting to see the uh, the context of the props and the, the motors there and certainly listening to it is nice and smooth but uh, yeah it needs to poke upwards quite a lot more now I was still struggling here because basically you do a full throttle and you will pull 85 amps and your battery will last less than two minutes I mean those are great big motors we got there and not particularly efficient props and it really shows it's it's not so much the high end where you kind of expect the battery to get sucked dry it's just the cruising thing seems to be you know it's really going down fast here so I was you know I was impressed enough with the smoothness and the fact you could fly it very fast and it felt reasonably good in the turns not as snappy as some because it carries a lot of weight with it but yeah, pretty good. I mean, it flies great, and it, this is out-of-the-box settings, and that's good. But, you know, to me, there's a bit of a problem with the amount of power. It's it's just sucking out the battery there. All right, two batteries in, and I'm going to stop because I'm not happy with the amount of current draw we're getting. A full throttle gets over 85 amps by the looks of it. And I'm a bit bored of coming in for landing and, and sticking it in the grass like that. So, I don't know, I think it might be these props, these three bladed 5045 ball nose. Uh, even to me, who's not really kept up with props, seem a bit old. So I'm going to try putting something else on them and, and come back and try flying it again, see how that goes. So I wasn't too happy after those initial flights. And I remember uh, NJ, NJ Tech, reviewing this and having a really good experience with it. So I sent him a text to see if he had any advice for me and he said ditch those props they're awful i had some dow cyclone uh 5045s and he said those would be a pretty good match i could have just rewatched his review because it's actually one of the first thing he said about throwing away those props because they are awful and inefficient and if you haven't watched nj channel before check it out because he's an awesome freestyle pilot as well as a good reviewer so i then came up with this so i've got the the cyclones installed i've put a wedge under the camera to get it roughly the same angle and then I went back to the field to fly it, and this is what happened. So we're back out to the field on the Dow Cyclones. Uh, it's a bit of a different day, the sun's out. But we're still getting, you know, a reasonable bit of noise on the display here. I haven't tried the VTX on the other settings, because it, it can do less power. I think this is putting out something like 400 milliwatts. It's got an option to do 25 or 200. As you can see here, I was down at the field with a couple of the guy is having a, a bit of a, a fun fly around and you know there's a couple of flags there we set up so this is still pulling a lot of amps um, especially under full throttle but it kind of feels better in the air now it, it feels less noisy it feels like it's more efficient I don't know if it actually is or not but it certainly feels a bit better than it was so I did another three batteries and of course I had the GoPro this time up on its little wedge to get the angle about right and I felt it was flying a lot better uh, with the props. I'm still not getting amazing flight times out of it but you know I was reaching three minutes at least and you know there's loads of power available still even with these props and you've got no problems getting some brilliant 
straight line speed. As I said before, it still doesn't feel super agile in the turns. I think that's because it's it's a little bit of a heavyweight. I mean, I haven't weighed it, but just feeling it compared to something like the Coppis One, it's like Ooh, this is this is a bit of a porker. At the same time, though, the flight performance is very good. The tunes out the box are great. Um, we tend to get a little bit of jello on the GoPro here, and I think that's the fact that that sun straight in the lens there because it's so low isn't helping much because uh, all my other FPV camera and the general gist of it flying along it is it was very smooth but yeah we had a good fly around we had some attempts at chases going on or that was really hard to see the uh, other quads in this light they just blended into the grass we messed about through the flags and uh, you know there were crashes not from me I hasten to add <laughs> there were always plenty of crashes great fun to see the guys again uh, to land I was I still couldn't get the right angle on this one uh, coming in and the grass is too long and too wet to come in low like I'd want to so I ended up getting close to myself flicking into angle taking my goggles off and having to sort of try and see it I should explain I'm really short-sighted and this is really tricky unless I'm close enough so it was a bit of a struggle. It came down okay, but I still would like either a, a bigger field of view or to poke that camera down a bit. A lot better on these props, much better. So, conclusion then, and it gets a bit tricky here because in many ways this is an absolute excellent quad. Now there are a couple of little things that annoy me. First off is the camera angle. What you've got in here, and I will show a close up, is these two little bits of metal and they stop this camera going down any further so minimum angle is not particularly helpful now you can of course file these away dremel them off if you want to but something that's so well engineered like this it seems such a weird oversight to have it like that we, we literally it's almost like they thought well nobody's going to want to put the camera down because they want to go fast but I still need to land comfortably if it was a dry field I'd be happy going in sort of blindly flaring and then dropping but where it's full of mud and horrible stuff um, I need to pick my landing spot carefully. This tends to make it less beginner friendly and you might be thinking this isn't a beginner quad this is a high spec quad. Well yeah it's expensive and it's quite well spec'd but if you had a normal camera angle you could fly it really gently and it'd be a really nice beginner quad as well because it you know it works really well it's got great parts but like that um, it you know you'd be crashing it every time. The other thing that's a little bit of a pain and I'll better show close up again is the button for the VTX. It's right in there and so you're going to need a little pokey thing to ever change stuff and then you have to try and read the display there. So it's a bit tricky. It's not the end of the world um, unless you change channel every two minutes. Uh, another weird thing which comes again to seeing how well engineered this is is the fact that to get a GoPro on in line with the minimum angle you need to put a big wedge under it or some sort of printed part it just seemed like a really weird oversight the fact that this the, I mean the, the the top there to put the GoPro on and you've got the strap to put around it brilliant it's just the fact that it's pointing literally right at the prop so getting any speed all you'd see is the ground and of course those original props were pretty awful I mean this can still pull an awful of amps but it feels better in the air it sort of feels more efficient at your sort of more moderate speed if you like however it does fly very nicely um, and you can really throw it about and it's nice like that I feel that it's its biggest failing is the fact that just previously I reviewed this the Coppis One the Coppis One is in the same sort of league in terms of the high spec uh, and the price but the difference between them is really quite marked this is an absolute joy to fly very easy the camera angle will actually move downward so you can fly it very gently if you want to and you can hook it up now this is interesting if you look at these two camera angles I don't know if you can see I might have to get a different picture they are about equal and the difference in this is I can see very comfortably to come into land and I can even pop the camera angle up more this I can't they're both supposed to have a 2.3mm lens this one has a significantly wider field of view and is really easy. This one says it's a 2.3, it feels more like a 2.5, it seems a little bit more closed in. I, I feel like I'd be giving this a much better, like, oh, it's a great quad and stuff, if it wasn't for this one. Because this flew so well and is so agile, um, 
it just blows it away. I mean, using a car analogy, I suppose you could say, you know, this is like this is like your Ferrari able to hug the corners and have that performance with agility. This is like a big muscle car which is just going to power through. I think straight line speed, this would win because this can turn a, a massive prop. I mean, the motor size between them is is amazing. So yeah, this this is incredibly powered motors, but of course it's a lot heavier as well. Uh, but you'd probably get more out of it. But yeah, I mean, you can see my problem. It's a great quad. It's not as good as this one. I like this a lot better. Of course, a review, and especially my opinion, is always going to be subjective. So you might see things in here, you think, well, this is much better than this one. Um, I don't see it myself. So yeah, Diatone GT200S, it's a great quad, but for me, the Coppice beats it. Anyway, this came from the good people at Banggood, and thanks very much for sending it, I enjoyed playing it. And of course, if you'd like to check it out, there is always a link down below you can click on. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.